If we want to repeat something in our program, uh, we use something called uh, a loop, or might also be called iteration, the idea that we repeat something a number of times. And there's two ways we can do that. In this video, we're going to have a look at four, which is when we want to repeat something uh, a fixed number of times, when we know how many times we want to do it. It doesn't have to be sort of permanently fixed when we create the program. The number of times might be the result of a calculation or an input, and we'll have a look at that uh, shortly. Um, I tend to find that students who teach themselves to program use while when actually for would be more appropriate in um, a lot of cases because it results in a shorter program and the use of fewer variables thereby saving uh, memory. So imagine we want to print the word a hello 10 times. So there's a variety of ways we could do that. We could use multiplication, we could literally print it 10 times, but one of the ways we could use it, um, do it is using a for loop. So I'm going to show you how to do it first and then I'll explain a little bit how for works. So Python, the, the form of the for loop is this. So you'd say for now n in range 10. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'll show you how it does it. And then um, I'll explain a little bit about it. So for this top line tells the uh, computer how many times to repeat. And I'll explain a little bit how that works in a minute. Um, and then the indented section is the section that we want to repeat. So if I run this now, it'll print hello 10 times. If I want to stop repeating, I just go back to the left-hand margin. So only the repeated section gets repeated. So if I do this, print the end, then that bit will only be printed once because it's back against the left margin. So it's as simple as that. So lots of programming languages have uh, things to start and end a loop, uh, but in this case we don't uh, do that in Python. We just indent the bits that we want to repeat. Okay, so why why is that working? What is that actually doing? Well, range is a little bit strange uh, in Python because most programming languages have the idea of kind of counting with a loop. So in something like BASIC we would say for uh, n equals 1 to 10. So most program languages have a for command, um, but uh, the way the Python one works is slightly different. So what it does is um, this thing's called a loop counter, and it uses a list. So range 10 creates a list. So if I have a look at what this does, we can see that range 10 actually creates a list with 10 numbers in it. The, one of the things that takes a bit of getting used to is the fact that um, programming languages often start counting at zero. So when we're counting to 10, we're actually counting from zero to nine rather than one to 10, as you uh, might do when you're counting ordinarily. But there are 10 numbers in the list. So what this um, line for n in range 10 does is it makes n, which is a variable, and it doesn't have to be n, it can be any variable name we like, um, it makes that each member of the list in turn. So the first time, n will be 0, and then it'll be 1, and then it'll be 2, etc., up to 9. And each time it moves through the list, it does the repeated section, the indented section. So that's why it's going to print hello 10 times. Now, we can actually use n. So if instead of printing hello, we print n, we can actually see what it's doing. So we can see that it's working through that list. And we can see what the value is. So we can use the value as well. So we could do uh, something like this. If we wanted to print the 10 times table, for example, uh, we could print n times 10. And we can even use the, the variable multiple times. So we could say n uh, times in fact, we could put the 10 in there as well. 10 equals, and then we run that program. We can do that kind of thing quite easily uh, with a loop. But what about if we don't want to count from zero, or if we don't want to count up, or if we don't want to count in ones? Well, we can also do that. So. Let's have a look at range in a little bit more detail. So the, the range command itself can take either one, two, or three um, 
arguments. So in, in um, Python 3, if I want to see what range is doing, I need to convert it to a list. If you're using Python 2, um, you don't. So um, range 5, for example, will give me a list of five numbers, but it will count from 0 to 4. So one of the important things to note is that the list, the value of the list, the loop counter, never gets up to 5. And that's uh, one of the things, one of the quirks that you need to get used to. So that's a single value. It starts counting at zero up to one less than the number you give it. But there are five numbers in that list. What about if we don't want to start at zero? Well, if we give it two numbers, um, so if we say range 5, 10, for example, it'll start at 5 and start counting up. Now, this is where it gets starts to get slightly confusing because it never gets to the second number that you give it. So it counts from 5 to 9. So it always stops one short. Um, you can do uh, the same thing with negative numbers. So you can start off negative, so you can say minus 5. Now if I wanted to count from minus 5 to plus 5, if I was plotting a graph or something like that, um, I would go minus 5 to 6 just because it stops one short. So there it's going minus 5, counts up to 0, and then it um, uh, goes up to 5. So we can ha have a range of numbers. Uh, we can have a start, a start number and an end number. And we can also give it a third um, argument. So if we say list range, so if we say naught to 101, which will mean count up to 100 because it stops that one short. And then the third argument is the step size. So if I say 10, what that will mean is it will count from 0 up to 100 in steps of 10. And again, we can count down by just giving it a negative step size. So if I say list range, um, so if I go 100, now this time, because I'm going down, one further than I want to go uh, will be minus 1. Uh, which is, again, is, seems a little bit strange. And if we go minus 10 for our step size, it will count down in tens. So that'll start at 100, count down to 0 in steps of 10. So we can control the counting um, using that, using a list. Um, uh, sorry, using, using range. If we just want to repeat things a number of times, then it doesn't actually matter what um, numbers we use and we might as well just use a single value because if we're just repeating something 10 times range 10 is nice and straightforward because the, the single number is the number of times you want to do it okay so um, and again we can use that however we like so we can print that value out so 100 um, 100 minus 1 and minus 10 and we can do we can still use the number but we count down in the same way um, because we've got this idea of kind of iterating through a list rather than counting we can actually count through other things so actually what we can do we could use a word here so if we say um, for n in uh, hello what this will do is it will repeat the uh, indented section the same number of times as there are characters in the word. So because there's five letters in the word hello, um, what we'll get is the word hello five times. Obviously this time n isn't a number, n will be a letter. So in this particular case, um, n will take on the value of each letter in turn. So um, if I print n now, what I will get is each letter there. So that can be quite useful if you want to process some text. So for example, if you're doing something like a seizure shift cipher, um, what we can do is we can um, print the ASCII code of that number of that. Um, oh, no, we can't. Because we need an extra bracket. So we can print the ASCII value. And then what we could do is we could turn that back into some text by adding one to it for example.
So that's quite useful um, for that kind of thing. We can also use the same idea with a list. So if we had a list of numbers, so um, and we can either type this list in or we can um, make it up. Now remember the difference between a list and an array is that uh, a list can have all sorts of different things in there. So we could have uh, a word, uh, a number, uh, a true or false Boolean value, and um, and also a float. And then obviously um, we can we can print that. But because they're all different things, we can't do a calculation with all of those. Um, but we can just print them. So this time n in range um, with a list, n will become each value in the list in turn. So um, we'll just print that out. So what we'll get is hello false 1.5, uh, sorry 1 and 0 0.5. So that's uh, quite useful. Um, so how would we use this in practice? Well we could say um, we could use, I said that um, we didn't have to have it a fixed number of times. Obviously this particular example that's always going to do four things but we could um, do something like this. We could say um, We can ask for a number. Now we need we need int because input will uh, input that value as text. So int turns into a number. So we're going to say um, give me a number. And what we're going to do then is we're going to repeat that number of times. So we could say n in range um, num, and then let's just print hello again back to where we started so it's going to ask for a number and it's going to repeat that many times so rather than repeating a fixed number of times we've we've um, we're giving it how many times so it doesn't need to be fixed when you write the program it's just fixed literally as it starts repeating so I've said give me a number i would said two it gave me two hellos if I said um, five it will give me five hellos. And obviously we can do other calculations with that. So if I double that number, for example, it'll give me twice the number of hellos that I asked for. So if I say three, it'll give me six. So that's a quick introduction to four. Four is going to be the most common type of repetition I would suggest in your program. Um, because most of the time you do know how many times you want to do something. You want to perform a calculation for each number in a list or you want to do um, some sort of calculation for each letter in a word or you want to repeat things a fixed number of times because you want to do it for every character in the game or you want to pick six lottery balls um, for your um, Saturday night lottery ticket etc. You can also um, repeat things in other ways. So if you don't know how many times you want to do things then um, you need to use a while and we'll have a look at that in the next video.